So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.3 Beta 1 to all developers yesterday and I want to go over some of the things that Apple introduced, go over the build number, go over some of those performance and bug fixes that they did implement because again with 15.3 it looks like we're going to get mostly bug fixes and performance improvements rather than actual tangible features because with 15.2 we got a bunch of new features that were implemented especially from a privacy standpoint like the communication safety feature and all those nice things. So 15.3, let's see exactly what Apple has going on, and then we'll finally talk about battery life and see what we got going on there. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. So the first thing that I do want to show you, I actually didn't take a screenshot of the actual build size, but you can see that we are up to date with 15.3. And from what I remember, it was about 5.5 gigabytes in order to get this installed and get it running correctly. So give yourselves about you know 10 gigabytes of storage in order to get this installed without any issues. I was able to install it very, very quickly. Again, 5.5 gigabytes. And you would think that with a 5.5 gigabyte update, that would be something a lot bigger than what we're about to see. But we only saw some minor changes, so keep that in mind. But I'm gonna go walk through everything that we found with 15.3 beta one. So the first thing I do wanna show you or the next thing is actually the build number. So let's go back into the settings. Let's go into general, let's go into about. You can see that we're on 15.3 and we're on 19D5026G. So again, that G moniker means that we're gonna go lower and lower. This is just beta one. And I'm assuming we're gonna have maybe three, maybe four betas. Give Apple a month to get 15.3 ready to go for everybody to try out, to install on their iPhones, on their iPads, and then we'll be good to go. Because again, I think 15.4 is gonna have much bigger updates when it comes to actual universal control, some new emojis, new wallpapers, all that good stuff that we like to see, and actual tangible features and differences that we're able to utilize in our everyday iPadOS experience. The next thing that I'm gonna walk through is actually this new communication safety feature for children. So I'm actually not able to get it ready to go because you know I don't have any iPhones underneath me for children, but if you do wanna set it up, all you have to do is go into screen time. So type in your screen time right here, go on there, and then once you're in screen time, and then once you're in screen time, then you're able to scroll down and pick on the actual iPhone or iOS device or iPadOS device that's underneath these restrictions, and then go through the setup process there. I was able to find an article, so if we go into Safari, 9 to 5 Mac has a great article, which I'll link down in the description below of how to actually set it up, but it's very, very easy. All you have to do is go into screen time, swipe down and choose a child that you'd like to set up iPhone messages safety for, choose communication safety, and then toggle on the top corner right here, check for sensitive photos. And if you see right there, it says messages can detect nude photos before they're sent or viewed on your children's device and provide guidance and age appropriate resources to help them make a safe choice. So basically it doesn't totally stop everything but happening, but it does give two prompts to make the children kind of understand what they're about to view, what they're about to okay themselves to view. And then also once that prompt comes up, it'll also notify the parent on their iPhone or their iOS or iPadOS device saying like, hey, your child is thinking about opening this photo or unblurring this photo, you should really take a look at that and make sure that they don't do it. So I love that Apple's implementing all this and some people are a little bit worried because they think that Apple's kind of looking at our messages, but this is all done on device. So nothing is being sent to Apple, nothing is in Apple's cloud. It's all done with machine learning on the iPadOS device. So you don't have to worry about sensitive information, sensitive photos or anything like that getting to Apple when you don't want it to. But as you can see, this is kind of what it looks like. So you can see that a blurred photo is going on right here. And then it also says, if you zoom in, this may be sensitive, view photo, talk to someone you trust if you feel uncomfortable or need help. So I love that Apple's implementing this, making it a lot easier, giving parents peace of mind when it comes to the situation. Not something that I personally need to worry about for a little while, but I know there's a lot of parents out there with you know 11, 12, 13 year old kids that have these new iPhones and have the entire internet in the palm of their hand and they don't really know what to do with it. So having this feature is just another little safeguard to be able to allow parents to feel better about themselves when giving their phone to their children. And again, these are some of the splash screens. So this photo could be sensitive. Are you sure you wanna view it? And then it's your choice, but make sure you feel safe. So Apple still gives the user the ultimate choice to view this photo. But again, it warns the parents and it double warns the child before they actually open it to make them think like, hey, this is not a good idea. Make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into before opening it, opening it up. So another cool feature that I noticed, which I was under the impression it was only a YouTube premium subscription service or feature, is within YouTube, you now have the ability to do picture in picture. So if I go into my YouTube application, I'm going onto a video where Plus Play, you know, the Pat McAfee show, absolutely love it. But before, when I would actually scroll up, 
the video would disappear. But now you can see that we have a picture in picture situation. And again, I have not signed up for YouTube Premium. I do not pay YouTube a single cent for this service. And not only that, but then also when you lock it, you still have the ability to listen. So you can see right here that it's actually still playing and letting me listen to it as if it's like a Spotify playlist or a Spotify song or Apple Music song. And it's just playing in the background. So having this ability here, I think is awesome. And especially on the iPads. On the iPhones, it's a little bit crammed, a little bit small. But on the iPad, to be able to do this, minimize it, make it as small as you want, make it as big as you want. Maybe it's, again, foreshadowing a little bit of what floating windows could look like. Because then you can also pull up, you know, your quick notes. Then you go in here, you have the keyboard popping up. So let's go here. Keyboard's moving around. You have so many things happening at the same time. I love this feature and it's really giving me, you know, a sense of relief that maybe Apple is thinking about letting us do a little bit more once iPadOS 16 comes around. Because I think with iPadOS 16, Apple's finally going to have to turn that corner and give us something a little bit more when it comes to using your iPad as an actual computing device and a multitasking or a professional multitasking tool. But that is YouTube, it's been working perfectly. And then again, to go back, I just go here, press this button, and we're right back into YouTube. Let's move this, all this stuff out of the way. So we'll press done, and we're right back to YouTube. Overall, loving this feature. And again, I don't know if it's an iPadOS 15.3 situation, or maybe YouTube just opened up the reins to everybody to be able to do picture in picture, but I thought that I would bring that up to everybody. Another new feature that I noticed inside of the Apple Podcast app is how things are actually played. So if I go onto anything, if I click on one of these, let it play out and then click down here, you now have this like side view menu, which I didn't think was actually a thing. So now in order to see exactly which podcast you're listening to, so if I click on the Tim Ferriss show, let's press play here, click on there, boom, you now have a side view, kind of like a sidecar view of exactly what's playing, what's going on. You can add a little sleep timer. There's episode notes that you can show on here. So all the information of the current podcast you're listening to will be on the right hand side. So again, if you guys are Apple podcast subscribers, Apple podcast users, this is a nice little feature, which I think went underlooked with the 15.3 release, just making it a little bit easier to navigate everything. Now, again, the left side of the screen is not usable. Let's just swipe down on this and then you can start to use it. Obviously it still plays in the background. That's why you search everything on here. But once you click on this, the rest of the screen is unusable. Keep that in mind. And then lastly, there's a new splash screen when you do open up Apple News. So with Apple News, they added the ability to get news into your inbox. So I think Apple is doing this to kind of compete with things like Morning Brew and some of those newsletters that come in and give you all the information you need at a glance. So basically, Apple News will sign you up and it gives you the best stories picked by our editors, personalized based on your interests. And it says on device, artificial intelligence will analyze your readings to group you with thousands of other users with similar interests. Aggregated information about those interests will be sent to Apple to personalize your email newsletter. Apple doesn't know which stories you've read. So again, it's all done on device. Apple's trying their best to keep everything as private as possible so things aren't spoon fed to you even though you're not really knowing it. Kind of like what Facebook has always done, right? Facebook kind of just throws whatever Facebook wants at you in order for you to view that content. Apple's taking it the totally separate approach or a totally different approach where whatever you normally read is what you're gonna get, right? And again, they bring it down and they turn it into a nice little newsletter inside of your mail application. And from my understanding, it only works with Apple's mail app, but then again, that's what Apple wants to do. They wanna keep it inside of their ecosystem. And then lastly, Apple also has another little splash screen. If you haven't shared your location services, they do bring that up if you do wanna allow that to happen. So all those things are nice little updates to Apple News, which I'm all for, and I'm happy that Apple's kind of making these changes. And again, competing with those third-party applications like Morning Brew and like these other companies to kind of keep it in-house and keep everybody inside of that little Apple walled garden in the Apple ecosystem. And then lastly, let's go into battery life. So if we go into settings, let's scroll down to battery life. Let's see what we've been dealing with over the last few days. So let's go to the last 10 days and you can see that we're averaging about an, about an hour and 19 minutes of screen on time, almost three hours of screen off time. Again, we haven't used the iPad too much because if you guys follow me on Twitter, there was a little bit of a life event, all good news. So that's awesome to see or awesome to hear. But overall, battery life supposedly should be getting better. And I've heard that with 15.3, people's battery life performance has actually increased and gotten a little bit better overall. So hopefully Apple is getting closer and closer to that eight to 10 hour battery life. And I've actually personally been using the actual iPad without the Magic Keyboard. I've been using it in a folio case so I can move it around, make it compact, make it a little bit easier to move from place to place. And I, when I knew that I wasn't gonna be typing a lot. So that has also saved a little bit of battery. But as these days go on, once we do the follow-up video on 15.3 Beta 1, we'll probably be able to see how that battery life trajectory is gonna continue to grow. But that's gonna do it from a battery life perspective. Nothing too crazy. On a day like this one right here, you see we have about four hours of screen on time and we used about 75% battery, which means that we're probably gonna get around five and a half hours of battery life on a day like this, which was a lot of Peacock, Disney Plus, so a lot of content consumption, YouTube, 
And apparently Find My actually takes up a lot of battery in the background. So keep that in mind when it comes to the Find My application and how many air tags you have in the wild and how many things are being tracked. But that's gonna do it for the battery life. Let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So as everybody saw, 15.3 beta one didn't really bring anything really noteworthy in terms of a feature standpoint. There weren't any new emojis, you know, universal control still has not been implemented on iPad OS or Mac OS or iOS. I don't think it's gonna come to iOS at all. But again, those are those real nice features that we're waiting for. So I'm assuming maybe with 15.4, Apple will give us those new game changing features that we've been promised ever since WWDC in June. I know that 15.0 didn't get released until September, but again, Apple teased Universal Control all the way back in June, and I've been yearning, and I've been really wanting to use Universal Control. And again, Apple's supposed to add, I think, up to 80 new emojis to all iOS, iPadOS, and macOS devices, which is always a welcome addition, because I know a lot of people love their emojis in terms of how they wanna portray their feelings through text. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully everybody enjoyed. This is a little bit of a shorter one because there wasn't too many new differences. And we're gonna start to ramp up on these videos once again. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. We got a bunch of new stuff that came into the studio, a bunch of new products, a bunch of new accessories. We got a really cool one that I gotta do a video on of like a tri-fold secondary display thing for laptops and iPads. So definitely stay subscribed, leave a comment down below. And again, let me know down below. Did you guys update to 15.3? Are you on the beta program? Or did you just update to 15.2, which finally got released to the public earlier this week? Let me know in the comments below. Always curious to know. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.